Thanks for that introduction. Um, my concerns are shared with curriculum directors throughout uh, Cook County and the uh, Collar Counties. Uh, on Friday, I presented this uh, to a group of about 100 or so of my colleagues. Uh, and, and here, and it was by no means non-unique, uh, my concerns. Uh, one has to do, you know, I have logistical concerns, uh, educational concerns, and, and well-being concerns. And then financial concerns. So there are going to be multiple administrations of the park exam. Right now, we've allotted four days to testing uh, within a compressed time frame in the spring. We plan on testing 849 students enrolled in two algebra. By the way, students enrolled in two algebra include freshmen, sophomores, juniors, some seniors. We also are going to test our uh, three English students, so our junior English classes, including uh, AP Language and Composition, three uh, English two, and three English honors. And uh, so again, so that makes sense. That's juniors, right? I mean, that kind of makes sense. But then again, for the two algebra, we're testing just about you know kids across grade levels. Um, so the cross grade level testing means that uh, all instruction during those four days of park testing will be significantly disrupted and will impact nearly all of our classes. We also aren't clear on what the manpower or woman power is to actually administer these tests, how many proctors need to be in the room. Uh, so there's another disruption. And if we're going to do that, then we are going to incur uh, the cost for sub coverage, which will be significant. But here's the real deal. Uh, the state has moved the ACT exam to March 3rd. And uh, PARC continues, uh, the four administrations of the PARC assessment will occur between that date, March 3rd, and the start of our AP exams. So what does that mean? Well, last year we had over 400 juniors take AP exams. Many of them took more than one exam. This means that a junior taking multiple AP classes stands to miss at least a week of instruction, four days to park, one day to ACT. That's a week right there, right before they take the exam. Uh, and they also uh, will miss, obviously, those AP testing dates. The well-being concern is one of testing fatigue and student well-being. Compressing ACT, park, and AP within a 44-day window has the potential to result in a few things. One is lower ACT scores and lower AP results. Now, if the ACT counts for college admission and AP counts for college placement or credit, uh, then what is the value of PARC beyond four days of additional testing in the spring? So we really have to look at what that opportunity cost is. Illinois is spending $57 million on assessments this year. $57 million. <laughs> and the park test is neither valid nor reliable as a measure. And the reason for that is because it's never been given to a large population. So we're paying to have a private testing company norm their instrument on the backs of Illinois students. <clears throat> That's a big problem. So the other logistical concerns, let me just roll through them because, you know, those are significant. Um, the state has not been timely in this. In fact, it's September, might as well be October, and we still don't know uh, specific requirements around the testing. Uh, we don't know who, you know, what the proctoring requirements are. We don't know the exact windows for specific exams. For example, is it English one day and math another, or both on the same day? We don't know the regulations for what the room setup needs to be. We do know we will be giving these exams on a computer, unless, of course, your school is on a block schedule, in which case they were just notified that they will be taking those park exams sometime in December with pen and paper. All of this is coming to us now. We submitted our school calendar back in the spring. This is extraordinarily disruptive to that process as well. 
to thoughtfully deploy standardized tests requires a significant amount of lead time. The calendar needs to be correct in the spring so parents and students know what to expect, and teachers. The implementation guidelines need to be secured, oftentimes a year ahead of time, so that we can prepare our accommodations for special education students and ELL students. Long term, high schools in Illinois do not know what tests will be administered in future years. We do know that Park has developed two English language arts tests, one English language arts test, a geometry test, and a one algebra test. But we don't know when we're giving those, if we're giving those, and I'll put it out there why we're giving those, because if we were going to gauge growth, we would have started with one algebra, English one, would have went to geometry and English two, and then up so you could have followed freshmen, sophomore, juniors, but really we're doing that in reverse, so it makes no sense. There's no cohort there. Um, so that's problematic. Finally, uh, there's the matter of trust. Uh, when park officials uh, went to the Illinois Board of Higher Education. They stated that high schools were on board uh, with park testing. And when that same group came to high schools, uh, they said, colleges are on board with this testing. Uh, neither neither are, are, are on board. Uh, if colleges were on board, we would see the transition of the ACT to park for admissions. That has not happened. It is not an admissions test yet. It doesn't mean that in five or six years, it could be. But right now, it is not. So there's a truthiness issue with what Park is telling uh, folks in Illinois. And there's a significant lack of transparency in the process. Now here's what we will do. Uh, should the state go along with Park, uh, we will do our level best to ensure that it's a thoughtful, test environment, um, but I can't help but be, normally I'm up here smiling, I can't help but be cynical about this. And, and one of the reasons is um, just on the accommodations front, I was, uh, and I'll leave it at this, uh, one of the accommodations, state-of-the-art accommodations, uh, I went to a meeting on Saturday, yes, just a couple days ago, we, I was told that one of the ELL, English language learner, accommodations approved by the state and park is to read the directions slowly in English and at a higher volume. That's awful as an accommodation. So I'm not the only educator that was at that table. Really? Really. <laughs> Although I felt like it, it is actually, it is, it is insulting. It's like a cliche. It is insulting. And, and that is a, uh, uh, an approved accommodation from the state. Um, so I leave you with that anecdote because that is, that encapsulates my frustration and the insensitivity uh, of this testing model uh, as it exists at the end of September and will be implemented Pending legislative intervention, you know, if we don't get legislative intervention on this, we will be going ahead with this uh, yes. in 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 the spring. I have a comment and then a couple of questions. Um, we've all been reading about this uh, a lot, and then your report tonight really really shed some light on some serious, serious issues. And the whole thing just looks like a debacle. Um, my question is, you know, I'm not seeing any benefit. No, no one has talked about any benefit that our students or our school might uh, receive uh, by administering the park test. Am I missing anything? No. Good. I didn't think so. So my other question, and this is a departure from my normal practice of trying not to ask a question like this until I'm pretty sure of the answer. 
but I have to ask it anyway. What happens if we just don't do it? What's the penalty? What, what happens if we mount a PR campaign and shame the state with some of what was in your report tonight and say, we're not going to do it because it's going to damage our students and we want, we're not in the business of damaging our students. What happens if we just don't do it? What do they do to us? I'm trying to figure out, so this, this test will not tell us how our students are doing compared to students in other states, right? Because some states have one and some states. It will not tell us how this year's juniors are doing compared to previous year's juniors, right? Because it won't be the same time. It will not help them get into college, right? I, I'm trying, and, and I assume <laughs> since, I mean, for our own internal purposes, we are going to have to continue assessments that, that do work for us. So I, am I correct that this is going to have to come on top of mm -hmm. a, the, the, the other testing? Because we can't, we can't mm -hmm. say, oh, we don't need to do the ACT anymore because now we're doing the park test because the park test doesn't do for us what the ACT mm -hmm. does, right? Correct. Right. So we will have to continue to do both, right? Yeah. We yes. will have to. Yes, we will. We will continue to administer the ACT. Now, the state moved that date from late April to early March. Now, we know when you roll that test date back like that, uh, it results in, on average, a, a decreased ACT score, about one point. Now, you might think one point, what's one point? But if it's the only time the kid's gonna, the student's gonna take the test, that point may make the difference between um, college admissions to certain schools or, mm -hmm. or scholarship money. So I, again, it's not mm -hmm. the best educational decision to roll that test back to March 3rd from the end of April. Um, and the state is phasing out the funding uh, for that uh, in two years. And, and if the waivers from No Child Left Behind were lifted, let's say, you know, two years from now, we have a new president, we no longer have this waiver regime, and so we're back to straight out mm -hmm. No Child Left Behind, okay? Would the measure of, of performance for schools in Illinois be PARC? At this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in fact, I, I want to add to the ACT thing. At one point, uh, uh, they announced that the ACT would not be part of it at all, and uh, it would be optional. Uh, but they, but you know, they have funded it in these last many years, and and it was like a voucher that they would like pay for students if they wanted to take the ACT. Of course, the problem is there's no longer a testing day in Illinois, so they would have to sign up on their own and take it on a Saturday, which means we would lose all that comparative data of giving it to all the juniors because it'd go back to being, you know, self-selected. So that already was a problem, but the high schools screamed and hollered so much that they de uh, decided to stick with it for a couple of years. Uh, I'm thinking, I don't know, did they say this out loud, Pete, uh, until we get park like more ramped up or whatever. I don't know if they actually said that or not. Uh, they, so, they talk explicitly around about crosswalk. The reason they're testing juniors, okay, they're trying to test juniors, uh, is because they want to ultimately crosswalk uh, student results on park to ACT and, and tap into that. What does crosswalk mean? Crosswalk means, hey, a score on the park test is the same as this score on the park test is the same as a 36 on the ACT. That's good to go at this college. So then they can make an argument that it does serve the purpose of, co of career and college ready. The other thing to bear in mind with PARC is that it's being developed by Pearson Testing Services, and they're very, they're the largest, if not the largest, they're what they're I think, they're, I think, I think they're, they're the largest, largest now in the school uh, business. Testing, in the testing business. So they're going into the market for, for, for post-secondary admission. That's, what they're, that's where they're headed. Now, the problem they're having is that school dis states are dropping off. Uh, again, we went from 22 to 12. Uh, so that, that significantly, that doesn't make a compelling argument for colleges and universities to accept that test. Right. So I have a question. We have, at last I knew, we had um, a resident of evidence, Evanston sitting on the Illinois uh, State Board of Ed, Steve Guilford. Um, is he still there and has anybody been in touch? 